Welcome to our lesson on the simplex method with mixed constraints. We're going to look at how to solve max problems and min problems, both when we have mixed constraints. So let's look at mixed constraints with maximization. We know that normally our constraints are always set up such that we have some stuff less than or equal to um, a, a positive number. Well, now with mixed constraints, we can deal with other versions. Part of the you know uh, large requirements that we have in order to use uh, the simplex method is that our constraints are always less than or equal to a positive number. And then when we do the minimization problems, we get the greater than or equal to when it's applied to the dual. But we start off with the less than or equals you know, when we go back to doing the simplex method. So it becomes um, a problem when we have mixed constraints where some of them are less than or equal to and some of them are greater than or equal to. Now, luckily for us, an inequality flips to the other direction simply by multiplying by negative 1. So if we are stuck with a constraint like this one of the form 2x minus 3y is greater than or equal to 6, and we're like, oh darn it, our constraints all have to be less than or equal to. Well, multiply both sides by negative 1, and all of a sudden it becomes negative 2x plus 3y less than or equal to negative 6. And now we at least have a less than, but it's a negative. Right? It's less than or equal to a negative 6. What this does is it allows us to um, see that the two possibilities for mixed constraints, i.e., if you have something set less than or equal to a number and something set greater than or equal to a number, really they, they both just um, converge to this idea that you just have some expression that's less than or equal to a number, but instead of that number having to be positive, it's just any constant. So we'll call these less than or equal to constraints and denote them as less than or equal to constraints. Right? So we basically just rewrite them all in terms of less than or equal to's. Let's look at an example. We want to maximize this objective function subject subject to these constraints we can see that um, we have our variables are greater than or equal to zero which you know still has to hold true one of them is the standard one the other one is you know in the wrong direction so we multiply it by negative one and just turn it into this one now all we do is we add in our slack variables we subtract our uh, maximization objective function portion over the other side and set equal to zero and throw everything into our matrix. So far, the only real difference to uh, standard maximization problems is that we can, can and almost always do have negative numbers now above the object, objective function row. So you see we've got this negative 2 here and this negative 6 there, which causes a problem. Because if we compute the values for the variables x, y, slack 1, and slack 2 that are associated with this matrix, we get S2 equals negative 6, right? See here? S2 equals negative 6. And this violates the condition of the simplex method that all variables must be non-negative. Well, in order to fix that, all we have to do is change the sign of any negative entry that appears in the upper portion of the last column above the line separating the objective function from those constraints. So we have to worry about changing this negative 6. If the problem is going to have a solution, there's always going to be another negative entry somewhere in that same row, which we can see right here, but in a different column, right? Duh, of course. And then we choose this column as the pivot column because pivoting with it will give a positive entry in that last column. So basically, because we have a negative here, we look for any other negatives somewhere else. We find one here. That becomes our pivot column and we're going to pivot with that one. We check our ratios like normal, and this gives me a ratio of 3 versus 13, so we're going to pivot on this number. This often means that we're pivoting with the other negative that we found, but it's not always the case. It just is often the case. Just realize that you're still doing that, um, that quotient thing where you're, you're taking the numbers here and you're dividing them by the numbers in the pivot um, column, and you're figuring out which one has the smallest positive quotient, 13 versus 3, so we're going to pivot here. 
And then we do our work and we get this reduced column and then we go from there. We check and go, okay, there's no negatives here, so we no longer have to do that. We're going to go back to the regular simplex method, which is find our smallest negative, and our smallest number, right? So negative 7 halves is smaller than negative 1 half. It's further to the left. So this is going to be our most negative number. This becomes our column. We check our ratios again, and because this is a negative number, we immediately have that this ratio is what we need. Because this gives us a 4 and this gives us a negative 2. And remember, we're looking for the, the smallest positive ratio. So we have to use this one. This is what we get after we pivot on the, on the y. We can see that we're done, right? We don't have any more negatives down here. We can see that we have a maximum value of 17 that occurs when x equals 9 and y equals 4. We also see that our slack variables will be zeros, so we're basically using up everything. What about mixed constraints with minimization problems? Well, if mixed constraints occur in a minimization problem, um, the simplex method does not apply to the dual problem. If our objective is to minimize f, then we have to alter the problem so as to maximize negative f subject to less than or equal to constraints, and then proceed as we did in the previous example. So for instance, we've got this function f equals 3x plus 4y, and we're trying to minimize that subject to these constraints. Now, because of the mixed constraints, we're going to try and maximize the opposite function, right? Multiply everything by a negative 1, because if we maximize the opposite, we're minimizing the original. And then we change these two by multiplying everything through by negative 1 to make everything a less than or equal to. So here is the simplex matrix that we get once we add in our slack variables. Right? We've got the negative 1, negative 1, negative 20, negative 1, negative 2, negative 25, negative 5, 1, and 4. And then we have positive numbers down here because of this. Right? If we, if we move everything over to one side, Right? You have to move it over to the f side to set it equal to 0. We get this. You'll notice that we're now solving for negative f. Also, because in this case we have two negative entries in the augment column, we have a choice. We can choose either one to start with. You know, They both have negatives in their rows, so either one will work. So we're just going to go ahead and start with the first one and go from there. Now again, we have some choices to make because with negative 20, we have two separate negative numbers. And that tells us we can choose either. Just like because we had two here, we could choose either. Because we have two here, we could choose either of them. So we're just going to go ahead and choose the first one. Make that our pivot uh, element. And we're going to pivot on this. So we would you know, multiply by negative 1 to make it positive, add it to here to make it 0. Um, at, multiply it by 5, add it to here, and so on and so forth. We get this resulting column. We still have a negative here, so it tells us we have to pivot here. We could choose either one, but we don't want to pivot on a slack, so we want to pivot on the y instead. Do the same thing, multiply it by, you know, well, in this case, just add it to here, multiply it by 6 and add it to here, and then finally multiply it by negative 1, right, to get rid of it. But anyhow, however you get by it, this is your resulting column and your resulting augmented matrix. Now that we've eliminated all the negative um, up here in the top portion of the augment column, we're good to go. Um, the simplex method can be applied. The negative 65 here is fine because remember we're, we're doing a negative f. So negative f equaling negative 65 really means that f equals 65. We can also see from the indicators down here that the solution is complete because we don't have any negatives left to deal with. And we can see that S1 and S2 are zeros, right? This third slack variable is 74, x equals 15, and y equals 5. Thus, when we put it all together, we know that the, the minimum value of the function occurs when x is 15, y is 5, 
you can see that if we plug that back into the original function, we do get, in fact, the answer of 65, which we knew we, we should have been getting from the matrix because negative f was negative 65. So let's kind of generalize everything and look at how it all worked. So these examples show us that if the problem is to minimize f and we have, you know, mixed constraints, then we want to maximize negative f. We're going to make all of our constraints less than or equal to constraints by multiplying both sides of the inequality by a negative 1. And then we're going to use slack variables to form the simplex matrix. Simple. Easy. In the simplex matrix, we always look in the upper portion of the last column, what we call the augment column, for any negative entries. If there are no negative entries, we can just start applying the simplex method, doing the whole you know, most negative on the bottom, and then you know, finding your pivot and going from there. If there are negative entries, we go to step four. When there's a negative value in the upper portion, we select any negative entry in the same row and use its column as the pivot column. Remember, if there's more than one negative value, you can start with either of them. Then in the pivot column, we compute all quotients, you know, once we choose it um, and, and go from there. After completing the pivot operations, we return to step three and repeat the process over and over again until all the negatives are gone. And that's it, guys. That's basically all I got for you for how we can deal with mixed constraints when we're trying to maximize and minimize.